Right, our next speaker, Peter Davis, uh, he will give us an update from WorkSafe Tasmania. He's the manager of the Accreditation and Dangerous Goods Unit. The unit is responsible for processing all licensing, accreditations, approvals, exemptions under four sets of legislation relating to industrial plant, hazardous chemicals, dangerous goods and explosives. Peter currently represents Tasmania on two national forums, the Australian Forum of Explosive Regulations and the Competent Authorities Panel concerning national model legislation, transport of dangerous goods. Thank you, Peter. Uh, <coughs> thanks, Pam. Um, Firstly, uh, thanks to Paul and Peter for two very comprehensive uh, reviews on DHS and asbestos. Um, Pam suggested that I might like to come along today just to see or to, to talk about the link that WorkSafe Tasmania has with the licensing side and accreditation of um, areas that involve hazardous chemicals, uh, dangerous goods uh, and other, other areas. So, um, that's where we'll take it. Um, just on that matter, with the don't forget there are the approved codes of practice for uh, the labelling of hazardous chemicals and the um, preparation of safety data sheets uh, and the managing of hazardous chemicals in the workplace. Uh, also, along with the codes of practice for asbestos removal, so they're they're there on the website to be uh, pulled down. Um, okay. The um, Accreditation and Dangerous Goods Unit uh, is a, quite a new unit, uh, just came into play at the start of last year with a, with a restructure. It incorporates two areas, um, one involving the, the management of the legislation concerning hazardous chemicals, dangerous goods, but also the uh, industrial plant and high risk work accreditation. So in a nutshell, what do we do? We're, we're looking really at the administration of the statutory obligations that are not only placed on, on you guys and, and industry, but also the statutory obligations that are placed on the, on the regulator that are administering the legislation. Uh, our unit specifically looks at four pieces of legislation, Work Health and Safety Act 2012, the Explosives Act 2012, Dangerous Goods Road and Rail Transport uh, Act 2010 and the Security, uh, Security Sensitive Dangerous Substances Act of 2005. So with the, um, the main focuses, uh, really our unit breaks it into two, two big chunks. We're really looking at the statutory functions that we've got to perform with all the, um, all the applications and submissions coming in from industry. Um, applications for, for permits and for licences, for certificates. Um, and, and with looking at all those uh, applications coming in, within, we also have to maintain a, uh, an administrative framework and databases to, to record that information and, and, and keep track of it all. Another uh, role we play uh, is compliance monitoring. So that may well be from a desktop perspective. Um, where we're looking at the information that's coming in and verifying that information, making sure that it, it rings true and, and seems to be accurate. And, and also some, uh, some outside um, field audits. On the dangerous goods um, side of the coin, we're looking at uh, dangerous goods transport, hazardous chemicals notifications, explosives and fireworks, and security sensitive dangerous substances. So if we just break it down into those blocks, the hazardous chemicals, um, one of the main roles is to look at the notifications that come in uh, to our organisation. Um, if, you've, if you're storing hazardous chemicals, you're, you're probably aware of the work health and safety regulations. Uh, Schedule 11 has a threshold uh, of quantities for hazardous chemicals where once that threshold is, is met, there's a requirement, an obligation for notification to take place. Um, obviously, there are other obligations within um, Chapter 7.1 of the regulations, which talk about the storage and handling, about the, uh, the use of the approved codes of practice with um, hazardous chemicals in the workplace, and, um, and also those st um, the codes of practice, of course, will, 
will pull up and talk about uh, Australian standards, uh, which are not mandated in the legislation, but they're called up through the, the, uh, through the uh, approved code. Uh, obviously, there are other issues to think about, uh, outer, water, outer warning uh, placarding and signs, emergency plans and procedures, uh, segregation of incompatibles and separation from dangerous goods. The information we receive is, uh, is scanned and recorded, placed onto a database. Um, the scanned material is sent uh, to a um, uh, to list map for uh, access by emergency services. So TAS Fire Service has have access to that. So that's typically for the larger storages of um, hazardous chemicals around Tasmania. Uh, as Paul mentioned, I mean, hazardous chemicals, you know, have characteristics. Whether they're chemi whether they're um, mixtures um, or, the, or the, the one product, the physiochemical, uh, whether it's an immediate explosion effects or it could be long-term, you know, uh, short-term chronic effects. Um, part. Sorry, yeah, part 7.1 within the legislation has all the requirements about um, you know, needing a, a register, needing a manifest, needing um, your, your placards, your um, labelling, safety data sheets, etc. And also, uh, there's a schedule there for when health monitoring is required and what, um, you know, for what hazardous chemicals. One of the other programs we, we run is the, um, the dangerous goods transport. Uh, program, and uh, that's covering um, the, uh, the the drivers and also the vehicles transporting dangerous goods. Uh, obviously, as mentioned before, the ADG code plays a large part in that, um, and that will refer to some 40 to 50 other Australian standards uh, referring to safety requirements for vehicles, uh, AS 2809 series for um, gas tankers, petroleum tankers, toxic uh, bitumen tankers, etc. Uh, it also calls up other standards such as uh, res load restraint guide um, and also um, uh, for uh, requirements for health monitoring of, of drivers. The, um, the Dangerous Goods Road and Rail Transport Act is based on national um, legislation, uh, national model law, and um, and obviously stipulates the requirements and obligations for drivers and the vehicles, the, the owners, and consignors, etc. Uh, there is a national um, training framework for the drivers, which is uh, uniform throughout the country, and um, there is a, a national group called the Common Authorities Panel, where we have representatives from each state that attend usually twice a year and, uh, and talk about some of the issues that the legislation presents and some of the issues that the ADG code presents. Um, as Paul talked uh, about the purple book with the GHS, um, and you mentioned the orange book, which is the dangerous goods model regulations from the UN, uh, that, that book is uh, used as the guide for the development of the ADG code and also, uh, and also relates with the IMDG code, the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code, and also the IATA uh, code, which is the International Air Transport Association code. ADG code, of course, uh, goes into much more detail about other issues, about uh, design of uh, packagings and, um, and also uh, which are then required to be approved. So they would do tests on packaging. So whether that package is, a, is made of cardboard or glass or metal, um, there's a whole raft of uh, tests that they would go through, drop tests, pressure tests, stack tests, um, uh, compatible with the product that it's going to hold, of course. The, um, another act that we, we look at is the Explosives Act that we administer, and that's concentrating on the, um, the shot firers, um, their, their competency issuing permits to them, um, the trainers, we audit the trainers, uh, the training providers and the, and the course, uh, 
it's got detail in there and requirements with respect to blast plans, um, manufacturing, importation. Uh, we also approve the ports. So we have uh, where ports and the berths where the, port, where the explosives are offloaded. Uh, we, look, we look at uh, those issues as well. With respect to um, explosive products, each explosive product goes through a, um, an authorization testing protocol and we, we look at the products. So each year we probably could, might receive anywhere between 10 to 40 products. Each state does the same thing, uh, which drives industry crazy. But, uh, and one of, the, one of the issues that we're looking at is, um, or that uh, Safe Work Australia are working on, is a national harmonised explosives legislation. So it's probably some years away yet, but it's uh, underway. Uh, there's also a national group, AFA, which is the Australian Forum for Explosive Regulators that meet it uh, usually once or twice a year as well. Uh, fireworks. Uh, fireworks is fairly topical in Tasmania at the moment. Uh, our system has just been reviewed and we've had a, a consultation period which ended um, for public comment a few weeks back and I would imagine in the next few months uh, there'll be more the outcome of that uh, information that's come into WorkSafe Tasmania will be reviewed and they'll be looking at uh, whether or not any changes are, are, you know, might proceed. Uh, obviously with the use of explosives around the state, uh, there are issues with respect to um, ground vibration and fly rock and air pressure. Um, there's industry who are, who are also uh, the Australian explosives manufacturers um, safety group manufacture codes of practice uh, for issues such as mobile ma manufacturing units um, and there are other standards uh, AS2187 with respect and, and, and the series with respect to the storage and use of um, explosives and I think we mentioned before or Paul may have mentioned the when we talked about the transport of dangerous goods which we focused with the, the ADG code um, with explosives uh, the main um, code there is the Australian Explosives Code, the AE code. Um, the Security Sensitive Dangerous Substances Act is a, an act that came in in 2005 and act as, as an umbrella over security sensitive dangerous substances. Um, so that uh, is talking about ammonium nitrates and ammonium nitrate emulsions and, and um, which are precursors for the manufacture of explosives and also explosives themselves, so individual you know, detonators, boosters, etc. Um, so the main focus with that is the supply chain, so security of the products and the supply chain, when it comes in, who brings it in, who it goes to and where it's stored and where it's used. Everybody who uses uh, security sensitive dangerous substances uh, has an SSDS permit, uh, anybody who works unsupervised are background checked, um, they require security plans and, uh, and, there's, and obviously to keep up to date with their record keeping. Um, the other programs associated with the Accreditation and Dangerous Goods Unit are to do with um, hazardous plant and, and operators. So we have a, a plant we have plant, several plant programs. Uh, one of those is the plant design registration. Uh, there's a uh, schedule within the Work Health and Safety Regulations which outlines what equipment requires design registration. And uh, there's a list there of, of those products. Uh, likewise, if, if you're a PCBU and you own a piece of plant that's listed within the schedule, then that piece of plant has got to be item registered. Uh, and obviously the, the appropriate standards are used by competent people to inspect that plant on a, either routine or regular basis, maybe long term with major inspections of you know, 5, 10, uh, 25 year, to ensure that they, they have been inspected and they are safe to operate. Obviously, if you've got that type of equipment, uh, the people that use that equipment must also um, be qualified to use it and, and be experienced. So the legislation or the regulations, uh, Schedule 3 there, identifies the high-risk work licences required to operate certain equipment. Not, all, not always just equipment too, it can be uh, uh, erection of scaffolding, 
uh, dogging, instructing cranes and other, other areas. There's 29 classes of, of licences there and uh, quite a bit of licensing, um, or sorry, the administration of all the applications coming in because those licences are renewed and, and issued to new, new people. There's also uh, registered training organisations that are involved, um, and so we're also involved with them and looking at the assessors, the people that do assess the people that have undertaken the training and, and issuing interim certificates and then we issue the, uh, the final licence. Uh, just some pretty pictures there. Um, but we do some other issues, we have some other programs as well. The General Construction Induction White Card, which you've, you've probably heard of, uh, we, I think we're up to about 50, 60,000 of those issued. Um, the asbestos removal licences for Class A and Class B, and also for assessors, for the people doing the air monitoring and issuing clearances. Um, we keep track of our uh, register of our health and safety representatives um, and the RTOs, the health and safety reps, and also the um, work health and safety entry permit holders. So that's, uh, that's basically it. So this, the summary that we're looking at with that little unit is to look after the administration of programs relating to the statutory obligations that are placed on the regulator and also uh, the PCPUs and, and industry alike uh, under those four pieces of legislation. And, and probably just to recap, under the Work Health and Safety Act, you've got um, uh, part 7.1 with hazardous chemicals, 7.2, moving on to your, your lead risk substances, uh, Eight with the, uh, chapter 8 with asbestos and chapter 9 on major hazard facilities. Okay, so I think I'll wrap up at that.